I think one of the most important things to think about when we are on a manifestation journey is that the universe has a sense of humor. The universe is actually very playful and you are very powerful. See, we're, we're put in this matrix and we're given this illusion of the way the universe works. Okay. And we're pretty much trained to believe that the harder you try to do something, uh, the better of a chance you have of figuring out how to make it happen and how to create it, you know, with your thoughts, your analytical thinking brain and your hard work and your hard actions. And to a very strong degree that can very easily work against you. People ask me all the time, what do you mean by reverse manifest? Okay. Well, Remember, the universe is playful. This is, this is the most important thing that we need to understand, dude. The universe has a sense of humor. And I know to us, we're like, well, that's not funny. I know, I know. But the universe has a sense of humor, okay? So whatever it is that you are doing, the universe is giving you everything you need to keep doing it, okay? Some of you have heard me make this analogy before, but I'm going to go ahead and use them anyway because there's always new faces in here. If I decide to pursue a relationship, relationships are going to run from me to give me something to pursue because that's what I'm asking them to do. If I set out in search to find the perfect lover, that person is going to hide from me to give me something to search for. But what about this one? Whatever I try to avoid seems to find me everywhere I go, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Whatever I try to avoid seems to find me everywhere I go. So, practice this. Practice this. Okay, I really like to... Well, when I very first started doing this, I would put theta waves in my ears. Okay, you can look it up on YouTube, uh, brain waves for manifestation or theta waves. You don't have to. Uh, if you can really get to the point where you can put yourself in the theta state on command, it really, it helps. But it took me a couple of years to figure out how to do that. But either way, I know they tell you to visualize all the time. Visualization can also end up working against, working against you too. But we'll get into that here in a minute, okay? But while you are choosing to visualize... Visualize this, whatever it is that you're wanting to manifest. Let's say it's money, okay? We're just going to use money as an example, even though that's like the most kindergarten energy to learn how to manifest, you know? Let's use money. Let's, let's say, okay, let's take it a step further, and let's say you want a, a certain kind of car, your dream car, Lamborghini. Here's one thing that I always used to do, okay? Not only do I picture myself having it, but I picture, I picture and I create the feeling that I've had it so long that I'm jaded. It's boring. Th think about the car you have right now, okay? It probably felt real good when you first got it, you know? Especially if it was one that you were planning on getting, you wanted it. You know, when you finally got the money, you went and got it and you loved it, man. And then after about a month, two months, you're like, eh, yeah, but... I really don't like that mirror over there. That, that, that's kind of getting on my nerves, you know? Yeah, the color, the color of that interior over there is kind of, I don't really like that that much. I kind of, you know, you start po pointing that little petty stuff that you don't like about it, you know? Picture that you have whatever this is you're wanting, whether it's the income or the car, and you've had it for so long that it's boring now. It's boring now. You're starting, to, you're starting to feel what it's like to be kind of annoyed by the little petty things because there will, that will happen. There will be petty things, okay? Because what we have to do is we have to equalize the frequency, okay? Anything that you want to manifest, you have to equalize the frequency, okay? And if you put yourself in a state of, I've had this for so long, I don't really think about it. And when I do think about it, I tend to think about the things that annoy me about it. That really helps create that feeling inside of equalizing the frequency of something that I've had for so long. I'm bored with it. It's kind of annoying. And I'm energetically kind of pulling my energy away as if I'm energetically avoiding it. See what I'm saying? The same thing with money. The money that you want. 
Okay? Most of us, again, are trained and programmed to pursue money. And the, the harder we pursue it, the more it runs from us. The harder it is to get your hands on it. You know? So what about this? I've had this money for so long. I've been making 200, 300, 500,000, a million, however much, for so long that I don't think about it. What does it feel like to make that kind of money? What is it really going to feel like, honestly? Well, I guarantee you one thing you're not really going to be doing is thinking about money. Think about it. Seriously, if you go, all of a sudden you're making 500000 a year. You're not thinking about money. When you go to the store to shop for food, you know, I need to go get eggs, cheese, milk, and bread. You're not looking at the price tag. You know, I'm not desperately doing all this math and all this, oh, I can't get this, this bread right here. It's too expensive. I got to get the cheap bread. And oh, I can't get those eggs. Those are too expensive. You ain't doing none of that. So we have to train ourselves to get on that frequency right now. Okay, I'm picturing that I make 500000 a year and I've been making it for so long that it's kind of annoying and I don't really care about it. I don't really think about it. And I begin to energetically back away from it. Think about it. Think about this. Okay? There is a lot of science that goes into this too. It's just very hidden and suppressed science. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Think about that. These are some little tips and tricks that, that they don't really tell you. Okay, because visualization can easily work against you. Those of you who have been studying Law of Attraction and Manifestation have probably uh, heard this and agree that visualization a lot of times can get you wrapped up in the feeling of lack. Because you don't need to visualize and think about something that you have. Okay, take something that you do have. How about a car? Do you have a car out in the driveway? What does it feel like to own that car? I don't know. I haven't even thought about it until you asked. Exactly. Exactly. So how do we create that feeling inside of ourselves? How do I create the feeling that whatever this is that I'm wanting, that is so astronomically out of my reach, seemingly, how do I create the feeling that I've had it for so long that I'm bored with it, jaded by it, and it's not really all that important. And if I think about it, especially if I'm critical minded enough, when I do think about it, the, the only thing that I tend to kind of think about it is the things that I don't really like, the, the things that irritate me, the stressful parts, you know, the annoying parts. Okay, dive into that too. You're making 500 grand a year, there's going to be some stressful shit that comes along with that. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yeah, there is. Think about that. What's that going to feel like? What's that going to feel like if you really, and, I, and it really helps, I'm telling you, if you have your brain in the theta state, okay? Doesn't have to, but it really helps to really create that feeling and start living in, fantasize about the stressful things that are going to come along with that because it is going to happen. You are never, ever, ever going to get to any point in this dimension where there is not stress. There is positive and negative that have to exist simultaneously side by side at all times. No matter how positively uh, your money begins to, to, you know, what positive direction that it starts to take, there will be negative that comes along with it. Pay attention to that. Think about that. Create that feeling. Imagine some of the stresses that come along with making $500,000 a year. You know, imagine some of the things that'll kind of start to annoy you a little bit about that brand new Corvette or Lamborghini or whatever. Well, you see what I'm saying? You understand the point that I'm making though? What we have to do is we have to equalize the frequency of whatever it is that we want to manifest. Now, how about relationships? How about that? What is it? Most of you, I think, know what it feels like to be in a long-term relationship. What does it feel like? What is it that we're really wanting? Okay. It's not actually a relationship that we're looking for. That's not what it is. That's not what we think it is, but it's not. It's the same thing with money. It's not actually money that we're looking for. What it is that we're all really looking for is a feeling. We're looking for a feeling. We've just been brainwashed and programmed for decades and decades and decades to look outside of us to find something that will create that feeling. Okay, with money, what we're really looking for is the feeling of freedom. 
The feeling of relief from stress. The feeling of not needing to worry about whether or not my bills are going to get paid. The feeling of not needing to worry about whether or not I can put gas in the tank. That's what I'm looking for. No amount of money is going to create that feeling. I promise you that. I promise you that. A lot of you know, at one point in time, when I first started off on my path, I lived under a bridge and ate out of a trash can. Mm -hmm. And now I'm very well off. Okay, I'm not going to tell you how much I make, but I am very, very well off. And I can promise you, no amount of money will create that feeling that we're looking for. Okay, same thing with a relationship. It's not actually a relationship that we're looking for. That's not what it is that we want. We're looking for a feeling. Again, we've been brainwashed and programmed for decades and decades and decades through music, movies, TV, and media to believe that a relationship will create that feeling. And it doesn't, does it? No, no, it doesn't. If it did, no relationship would ever fail. See what I'm saying? So what does it feel like? What is it that we're really looking for? What we're really looking for is the feeling of being appreciated, of being loved, of feeling like we're good enough, right? A feeling appreciated. I want to feel loved, appreciated. You know, I want to feel worthy. I want to feel like I am good enough. There is no relationship. Not even your person can create that feeling. It doesn't work that way. No, no, it does not. So, what we're really looking for is to not be interested in a relationship. Isn't that what it is that we're looking for? Isn't that what it feels like to be on the frequency of a relationship? I know every last one of you out there has said this at least once in your life. Whenever I'm out there looking for a relationship, I can't find one to save my life. Then whenever that day comes that I finally get my hands on one, now everybody wants me. Now everybody notices me when I'm not interested. I know every last one of you has at least said that once. Everybody wants me when I'm not interested. Because when you're not interested, everybody notices you. Because you're energetically out of reach. So what do you think happens when you equalize the frequency of that relationship by forming a relationship in your heart and filling this void yourself? What do you think happens? The first thing that happens is that your desire to have somebody come bring that love to you drops on your priority list. It becomes less important than it once was. So you stop looking for it. As soon as you stop looking for it, the universe stops hiding it. Because you have disengaged from the game of hide and seek. You didn't even know you were asking the universe to play. Mm -hmm. Now you're really attractive, aren't you? Aren't you? When you're happy, whole, fulfilled, and content with yourself and your life, so much so that I don't really care if I'm in a relationship or not. I really don't care. If the right person wants to come along one day and love me, that's great. If not, oh well, I'm not waiting on a person to show up in my life before I, I'm happy. I'm happy whether they show up or not. Everybody notices you now, don't they? Because you're not interested. You are virtually unavailable to anybody. That's when your person is right around the corner. We have to equalize the frequency. Anything other than that is reverse manifestation. Okay, if I wake up one day and I say, all right, I'm going to work really, really hard and I'm going to try to make more money. The universe says, okay, I got you. Here you go. You're going to work really, really hard and you're going to try to make more money. Got you. The universe behaves like water. It lifts those up who make themselves light and drowns those who make themselves heavy. If you put your hand in the water and you move it easily and effortlessly, there's very little to no resistance. But the more of a fight you put up against the water, the more resistance the water puts up. Think about it. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so there's tons. Since it's, oh man, there's 100,000 new people in here since the last time I put one of these videos up. So there's a lot of new faces in here. And I know there's at least one person that's going to hear at least one thing that I said in this video and change their life with it. 
Okay? And at the end of the day, that's what my job is. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Uh, I wish everybody love, light, and luck, and prosperity on their journey. Okay? Y'all have a good day.